Now we'll see the explanation why this splitting is occur. Now first of all, we'll consider only one proton and adjacent carbon. So this kind of situation in the molecule where one one protons on adjacent carbon which are non-equivalent. These protons are non-equivalent. By applying our simple rule, we can say if one adjacent proton is non-equivalent on the adjacent carbon, then n value is 1. By putting this value 1 plus 1 equals to 2. So for this proton we get a doublet and for this proton we get a doublet. So we get here doublet, two doublets. So this is doublet and this is doublet. So this is as per the rules which we have discussed previ previously. Now, we are going to explain why this has happened. Why we get doublet for this proton and doublet for this proton. So the explanation is here. Now see, we know very well, which we have uh, discussed in, in our first video of NMR spectroscopy, that protons are now acting as a tiny bar magnet in presence of external magnetic field. So suppose B0 is the external magnetic field and the direction of external magnetic field is given by this B arrow. Now these two protons are acting as a tiny bar magnet. So they are actually taking two orientation. In absence of external magnetic field, they can take any orientation in a space but in presence of external magnetic field B0, they are restricted to two orientations only. One is aligned with the applied magnetic field means in the same direction of applied magnetic field and another is opposite to the direction of applied magnetic field. So because of this, if I consider HA proton and in absence of if, if I uh, actually I expect its signal here means on del value, I mean, I mean on del scale, its signal is expected here for HA proton. But now, what is the influence of adjacent bar magnet, adjacent proton that is given by using a small arrow. Now this adjacent proton, which is acting as a magnet, now takes two orientations. One is opposing the applied magnetic field and another is reinforcing, means adding the applied magnetic field. So this proton is, uh, if this proton is actually opposing the applied magnetic field, this proton is shielded and if it is added in the applied magnetic field, this proton is de-shielded. So the same proton is now experiencing two things, shielding and de-shielding at a time. Now, when it is shielded, you know very well, we need to increase the applied magnetic field because our radiation energy is fixed, H nu is fixed and to bring this proton into resonance to have NMR signal, we need to increase that applied magnetic field slightly. So when we increase the applied magnetic field, we know very well, we get a signal close to the TMS. I mean towards the say, TMS, we call it as upfield region. And in another case, if the magnetic field of adjacent proton is added in external magnetic field, so this proton is now experiencing more magnetic field. And to bring that proton into resonance, we need H nu value. So we have to decrease applied magnetic field. Actually, that is done by the instrument automatically. That means uh, when this is de-shielded, our signal is splitted or shifted towards the downfield region. Means we are decreasing the applied magnetic field. So the same signal is now experiencing two things. One is shielding. And another is de-shielding. Shielding means close to the TMS or toward the TMS. And de-shielding means away from the TMS. So in absence of, uh, in presence of this kind of proton, uh, this, this signal is no longer remaining on this line. But it is now experiencing two magnetic fields and uh, to bring into resonance. So this is the first signal after shielding. And this is another signal after de-shielding and this is done automatically by the instrument. So this signal because of one adjacent proton is splitted into two peaks and this is called doublet. So this is called doublet. So this is the explanation for the signal if having one adjacent non-equivalent proton. If two non-equivalent protons are adjacent carbon, you can check here the molecular structure where two protons are there two protons on adjacent carbon that means B protons which are not equivalent to A. 
Now we have to consider what is splitting pattern for A proton, which is absorbing proton. Now by our rules, if for A proton there are two adjacent protons, means n value is 2. So 2 plus 1 means 3. For A we get triplet, which is in the ratio 1 raised to 2 raised to 1. And for B proton, there is just one proton and adjacent carbon. So 1 plus 1 means 2. So we get a double A. So this is as per our previous knowledge or as per the rules which we have learned in this video. Now we are going to provide explanation why this is happened. So I am going to consider only absorption for H A proton. Now there are two tiny bar magnets present on the adjacent carbon. You consider two arrows. Now if there are two arrows, there are three possibilities. Now, if this is the direction of applied magnetic field, so these two arrows means two tiny bar magnets can take three orientations. I mean, actually two orientations, but three possibilities. Three possibilities means what? In first case, you can see both arrows means both the tiny bar magnets actually opposing the applied magnetic field. Opposing means this proton, HA proton is shielded. Shielded means to bring that proton into resonance, we need to increase the applied magnetic field. So we get a signal towards the TMS means towards the up field. So this is up field. I must write here and this is a down field. Down field. This is a down field. Up field when there is a shielding and down field when there is a de shielding. Now obviously these two protons are opposing external magnetic field means actually making a covering on the HA uh, because of this to bring HA into resonance we need to increase B0 means applied magnetic field because of this we get this signal this is occurred once now see there is another possibility now you can check here there are two possibilities here First of all, this proton is uh, opposing applied magnetic field and second proton is actually adding, means reinforcing the applied magnetic field. Although net result is zero. Now what happens? First will oppose. Now first will oppose the applied magnetic field and second will, sorry, first will add the applied magnetic field in the applied magnetic field, reinforcing the applied magnetic field, exactly reverse and second will now oppose the applied magnetic field but net result is zero net if this net result is zero if this net result is zero although there are two possibilities so h a will is uh, this proton is now by considering these two possibilities this is not a shielded proton or shielded proton and that's why we get a normal line on the delta scale in absence of these two tiny bar magnet as if so because of this we get a double height you can see here a double height you can see here a double height because of these two possibilities and because of this we get a signal without any splitting actually in absence of these two tiny bar magnets we would have got this nmr signal for ha here means in absence of splitting now we can consider one more possibility where both tiny bar magnets are actually reinforcing means adding to the applied magnetic field. Adding means de-shielding. De-shielding means what? To bring HA into resonance to have an MR signal, we need to decrease the applied magnetic field. If you decrease the applied magnetic field means we are going to the down field, decreasing. And because of this, our signal is moving away from the TMS. So this line is actually getting. So in this way, we get a triplet because of these two tiny bar magnets present in the molecule and why this middle line is having double ratio or why its height is more because of these two possibilities and uh, this is the explanation for triplet. If three non-equivalent protons on adjacent carbon just like here you can watch on this carbon which is adjacent to this there are three non-equivalent B protons and we are going to consider absorption for HA. So, first of all, first of all, you apply our 
uh, our rules for b protons you can check here only one adjacent carbon or only one adjacent proton which is non equivalent so n value is 1 so for b there must be a doublet for a there are three non equivalent protons means n value is 3 3 plus 1 means 4 so we get a quartet in the ratio of 1 raised to 3 raised to 1 why this has happened explanation is given here now we are considering the splitting of HA proton absorption of HA proton now HA proton is here now you can say there are three tiny bar magnets so we have to consider three small lines and four possibilities what are that possibilities before that you check here this is the direction of applied magnetic field big arrow now there are four three tiny bar magnets means this protons opposing external magnetic field together you can check the direction opposite to this one opposing to the external magnetic field our h nu is constant h nu is constant so to bring this proton into resonance we need to increase the applied magnetic field so if it is applied magnetic field we need to increase so the signal is always shifted towards the up field up field means close to the or toward the tms uh, so because of this we get this this signal here means actually this signal which we can expect in absence of these three protons here on this line but now it is shifted towards this one here because of the, this direction because of this orientation of these three protons now we will change the spin of or the orientation of one tiny bar magnet now you can check here you make the pairs of three three arrows pairs of three three arrows and change the direction of one arrow at a time so i am changing this one starting with downward down one so this is now reinforcing and two are opposing now going to the middle one opposing sorry adding and the first and third one are actually opposing now going to the first one adding and remaining two are opposing so these are the possibilities but you can check the net result is on this line only so whatever is happening here three times but we have to just decrease external magnetic field slightly for three possibilities so because of this we get here a signal which is having three breaks which is having ratio thrice to the previous one so because of this we get a ratio three one two three because of these three possibilities now i'm moving toward the another possibility where i'm going to change the orientation of two magnets at a time two magnets now two are two here you can say two were opposing now here two are adding means we are going to change the direction of two arrows here no change here one change here two change two change at a time first and second changing direction third one is as it is opposing now we can change the direction of first and third first and third middle one keep as it is then first one keep as it is and remaining two are going to change their direction so in this way if you make three pairs of three possibilities but net result here on this same magnetic field means no net downward shift or upward shift so because of this you can check here the height ratio is three means 1 raised to 3 raised to 3 because of these three possibilities one more possibility is these three tiny bar magnets taking another orientation means that orientation is what toward the same of applied magnetic field means magnetic field of this three tiny bar magnet is added here in this applied magnetic field now this proton is feeling more magnetic more magnetism more magnetic field and to bring into resonance we need to decrease that external magnetic field so decrease means downward down field and because of this this is uh, because of this you can check here the single line here with this ratio so in this way we get a quartet because of three adjacent proton for ha whose height ratio is 1 raised to 3 raised to 3 raised to 1 
and the justification is given here in this different orientation of uh, these three tiny bar magnets in the applied magnetic field. Thank you so much.